PJ, how do we make sense of this? I mean, is this what you expect? And I mean, nobody could say that the, the, the Golden State wasn't going to hold serve, but to just destroy them two games in a row, I just didn't think it was likely. Uh, no, I don't think anybody thought it was likely. I, I thought I'm not. I don't like predicting because um, you never know what's going to happen, and particularly at this level. But I, I, I thought. Golden State could win in five just because I thought they were a better team, particularly on the defensive end. Now, you know, Cleveland seemed to be playing so well in the Eastern Conference playoffs. The Toronto series, maybe a little bit, you started to possibly question a tiny bit, but it shaped up like, to be honest with you, it looked like Golden State was playing not quite as well as they had played, even though they had to have that incredible comeback against OKC to win it and it looked like Cleveland was playing better than they'd played all year but uh, if you watched game one and we, I was at game one uh, I just thought the defense completely dominated the game and everybody talked rightly so about well Clay and uh, Steph didn't shoot the ball well and they still won but there were just things that happened defensively you just boy I'll tell you what they shot such a poor percentage they struggled to get shots they had a couple of 24 second violations so when we were doing the sports centers before game two, I, you know, it, you just said, well, if they figure out what to do defensively, and it was defense on both sides. I mean, you could always spin it one way or the other, but your defense controls your offense, and if Cleveland's not getting any stops, and they weren't getting a lot of stops, and in the first game, Golden State didn't turn the ball over at all, so Cleveland kept taking the ball, you know, out of bounds, so they were, they weren't getting any fast break opportunities. They were going against Golden State's half-court defense every time, and you just said, boy, they are really struggling. The switching is bothering them. They're not getting good shots. They're having long possessions. But what concerned me from game one, there were long possessions with few passes. Now, that's a bad combination. You know, if you have a long possession and you move the ball, you change sides of the floor, you say, hey, they're just playing good defense. When you have a long possession and there's very few passes, the defense is just packed in. The ball's not going anywhere. I mean, you're not going to get anything done. And they start out, and Don, I think it was Don, we were just talking about it. It looked like it's 28. I thought the game changed in about two and a half minutes. It's 28-22, Cleveland. Uh, Delhi makes a nice pass. Bron comes down the lane kind of on a transition play and dunks it. And they're up 28-22. And you're saying, all right, they, you know, they've kind of solved it. They didn't turn it over in the first quarter, so they lead. And then all of a sudden, boom, they get a three because they blow a switch, which they've blown. I mean, how many times have you seen Golden State cross offensively and both Cleveland guys go with the wrong guy and all of a sudden they get a wide open shot? So now it's uh, five point. It goes from six to three. They turn the ball over on the other end. They get a dunk in transition and they turn it over against the switch again. It looks like the switch confused them. Mm -hmm. Lou realizes what's going on, takes a timeout, like doesn't look good, the six-point lead's going away, boom, they come out, miss, they make, and they never trailed again, and it was like an avalanche. It just, you know, it got up to 15, Don makes a great point, they scored seven in a row, and you say, all right, maybe they're back in it a little bit, it's eight points at the half. You watch the third quarter, it's a joke. Every right. time they switched, they didn't recognize it. Guys are traveling. Guys are just not getting shots. The clock is on their back. And on the other end of the floor, again, the execution. Every time Golden State comes out of a timeout, they run a play, boom, misdirection, layup, dunk. I mean, it was – and Golden State turned the ball over in, in the second game. You know, that, that kept it from getting completely absurd. I mean, they only had nine turnovers in game one. They were sloppy with the ball in game two. And Clay and Steph, again – didn't have lights out Splash Brothers games. So, I mean, like, what happens if some night the two of them decide to make everything they look at, which they do often? And I, and I give Cleveland credit. One of the reasons those two guys haven't had monster games is their entire defense is focused on Steph and Clay, but, you know, to a fall right now. So, I just think the two defenses is just the defense and the three point shooting, the story of the game. The one team is defending extremely well and really has. Cleveland out of sorts, and Cleveland is not doing a good job defensively. I mean, they're just, you know, they're blowing coverages. They're not right. doing a good job pick and rolls. They're not doing a good job screens, and they're chasing uh, Steph and Clay to a fault. And the one team, as they all, these are the two teams that made the most and second most three point shots in the regular season. One and two. 
And as you would expect, Golden State has continued, and they're making their threes. And they're just, it's, you know, the, the discrepancy in three-point, not just makes, but attempts. They can't even get good three-point looks. So um, right now it looks, you know, complete mismatch. I, I do expect it to be, I got to say, competitive is the wrong word, somewhat competitive. I can't right. say more competitive. Somewhat competitive when they get to Cleveland. But, you know, it, it, it's crazy. I don't, I don't think they're going to get back in the series. But as dumb as it sounds, if they find a way to win game three, whether it's LeBron playing out of his mind or just playing at home or Kevin Love's able to play and they just, do, you know, play the way they played. It's not like they're not a good team. They're a very good team. All of a sudden, it's 2-1, but, and you're one game away from saying, hey, guess what? You know, we got a series again. But That's true, uh, PJ, but the, prob- the problem, and this is my analysis, that's why I said I thought the winner of game one would win the series because you have to win in Golden State. And, yeah, maybe they turn it around in Cleveland, but I don't think this team right now in the Cavaliers are equipped to win a game five and certainly not a game seven in Golden State. I, I don't disagree with you. But I'm just one. The series are bizarre the way they change. I mean, everybody talks about what they're going to do. I'm sure both teams looked at the two games in the regular season, even though they were a while ago, and, and David Blatt was coaching uh, Cleveland, which is a whole other story. And you look at the six games in the playoffs last year, even though the rosters were different, and then you throw that all out the window after game one because each succeeding game is just a reaction to the previous one. Mm-hmm. So if somehow, some way. Cleveland gets it together, and it's not like we're talking a, a, a junior high team. We're talking a, you know, a very accomplished professional team. If they can find a way to get Game Three, then Game Four is a really interesting game. And I hear you. I'm not betting on them, but you know, <laughs> the the weird way of looking going forward, three of the next four games, if if there are, are in Cleveland. So hey, let's you know we we got three of the next four in our joint. Uh, let's see what we can do. Um, I, it's it's strange, but I, I think it's always fascinated me because I've you know we've sat there so many times to get ready for a series, and it's more of a crapshoot in the finals because it's a team you truly don't know. You only played them twice. It, you know it's hard to explain to the average fan the difference when you have a conference opponent and when you have a non uh, like a, a finals opponent somebody you've only played twice now they they have played these guys two years in a row so there's a little more familiarity than normal but it's so different when you get ready for those first three rounds of the playoffs and then you get ready for the finals and and some of it's even just seeing them on tape and how many times you see you know when you get ready for a regular season opponent you're seeing you know usually a western conference team playing another one it's a team you know I have to be out west a lot. Um, when you get to the finals, there's more unknowns and there's more adjustments being made game game to game, and it just seems like the game plans and the adjustments Golden State are making and the way their players are executing them are just a whole level above what's going on in Cleveland. Now, before we let you go, PJ, the, the one thing that, that struck me about yesterday, and you, you brought it up uh, a number of times, is the switches. Now, I watched the Nick team with Mike Woodson get burned on switches all the time and refuse to go to man-to-man. Uh, is Cleveland just saying there's no way that they could cover this team man-to-man, that they couldn't fight through screens and things like that? Because the switches are getting them hung up. They are, but but turn it around, Michael. The other team's switching more than they are. Golden State's the best in the league at it. They have so many guys similar size. Golden State switches like crazy. They switch more than any team in the league. Well, but and, they're but good they, at it. The Cavaliers aren't good well, at amen. it, it seems. A- amen. <laughs> but the, what the challenge when you play Golden State, if you're just like a half a step behind, I mean, the other way to, to not switch is you chase all the time. When right. you chase Steph and Clay in particular, they only need like a, a little sliver to get open. I mean, it's not an accident. These guys take 31 threes every game, and they make, you know what, Steph makes 400 in the course of the year. Um, they're a team that it would help you if you can switch well against them. But talking about not switching well, Cleveland has really, really struggled uh, for two games trying, trying to switch out on those two guys.